I'm Charles Dennis, Director of ITDA. In the previous clip, we talked about why publish. And in this clip, we're going to talk about what is theory. It's an incredible part of doing research. Research is, first of all, got to be published, and second, it's got to be about theory. So, theory. So what's a theory? Well, first of all, if we say, well, that's interesting. Or what could account for that? Actually, the theory is not the it's not so much about being right, it's about being interesting. Because it's not just good enough to say it hasn't been done before. Because maybe there's a reason it hasn't been done before. Maybe it's too boring. And research is only going to be research if it's published. So it's got to be interesting, otherwise it won't be published. Could be just description, though description's not usually the most likely to get published. Could be theory building, what could account for some outcomes. Though a lot of theory is in testing what accounts for a particular outcome and even extending a theory. Are the causes for one thing the same in a different area or a different context? But these are some of the ways in which we make research come about in terms of theory. Theory building, usually that's exploratory using qualitative, qualitative techniques. It's interpretivist, things like in-depth interviews, but normally the research method. And that's in contrast to theory testing, which is confirmatory, quantitative usually, questionnaires for instance, positivist, or sometimes experiments. A theory is a statement about relationships. You can express this in a conventional way using ellipses or circles to represent a construct and an arrow to represent a relationship. The theory will be in what accounts for the arrow. Use the literature review and your conceptual or logical argument to provide the support for each arrow and this will be then the way that your research can start to form. The interesting arrows are the hypotheses. You don't have to have a hypothesis for every arrow, but it's quite common to do so. But every hypothesis has to have an arrow. And when we talk about building models, talk a little bit more about how those arrows will work. But this is one example. So this is associated with that. So this is one of the constructs, and that is one of the constructs. It's shown to have a relationship by the arrow between them. For instance, releasing an object, it will fall. So releasing objects is associated by things falling. Now that's a theory if we can explain why things fall, i.e. gravity. So we're not going to actually address the gravity question, but in the next clip, then we're going to talk about building a model and we'll talk a little bit more about these arrows and the relationships between the constructs.